What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to the Midwest Outdoors podcast brought to you by Fish Daddy. I'm your host, Jim O'Neill, and wow, it's been a minute since we've been here at the desk in the studio. We've been all over this winter for the show season. We worked consumer shows all over the Midwest, from Minnesota to Indiana, and a lot here in the home state of Illinois. And I hope you guys came out and saw us. I was able to give a few great seminars. We gave out some Stella Reels. Overall, it was an awesome time. Just got back from a pretty cool trip too. I had a Fish Daddy event and filming. Guys, we stopped at Upper Red Lake in Minnesota and caught some of the biggest crappie I have ever seen in my life. And then I was able to get up to Lake of the Woods. And a uh, quick little teaser here, if you guys didn't check it out or haven't started listening to the Midwest Outdoors podcast on Spotify or Apple, you gotta check out that right now because we have a little little gem there, a little hidden gem on there right now. So check that out if you guys wanna listen to a show that uh, maybe wasn't released here on YouTube. We have a full show today, I wanna get to it. Um, we get to sit down and talk to Trey McKinney, the hottest, literally the hottest thing in bass fishing right now maybe, and uh, the youngest, and an Illinois boy. So we get to have a great conversation with him after he won his first ever Bassmaster Elite Series event, and it was a thrilling tournament, so we'll get into that. Um, Kevin Van Dam released some huge news, we're gonna get into that, and uh, yeah, just a lot in the news and a new record locally. So let's jump right into it. Rex Remington, this gentleman caught a behemoth eight pound, four ounce smallmouth out of Monroe Reservoir in Indiana. It's been, get, it's been close a few times, the smallmouth state record on the lakefront in Indiana. And lo and behold, someone beats it in an inland lake. I don't know if anyone saw that coming, but it was an awesome fish. Uh, just happened on March 3rd this spring. And um, congrats, Rex, on that giant fish. That is certainly a fish of a lifetime. And we'll see if someone can beat that on the lakefront. Now, 8-4, that smashes the last record by over a pound. So we will see if that happens, but um, at least something to shoot for. And we'll see if any of the other smallmouth records fall on the Great Lakes this year. I know there's a chance it does. It's also a one-year anniversary of James Schmidt's giant Argentina River um, King Salmon. So I just like to throw it back to this one, show you guys a picture of this. I think we talked about it on our first podcast that we were filming, um, but King Salmon have a special place in my heart. The Chinook is a beautiful fish, and for this to be the IGAF all-length record, it's an awesome fish, so just wanted to show that to you guys real quick. Now in the news, like I said, Kevin Van Dam made quite the announcement this morning. So we covered the fact that he is done with tournament fishing, um, heavy hitters and red crest will be his last event. So he is, I believe it's, um, red crest this upcoming weekend. So obviously that's a huge event. We can see if he can win one more championship before calling it. I mean, I think that would be his dream. They'll be down on the Coosa river in Alabama. So I'll have my eyes glued to the screen all weekend to see who wins that one. His new announcement was not only like we all kind of thought he's coming out with a TV show but he's actually launching his own media company. So they will have a lot of things coming out um, from social media, uh, YouTube, and TV as well from different shows that he hosts or produces. So that will be really interesting to see. Um, I know his show, The Van Damme Experience, debuts on the Outdoor Channel early January of 2025. So I can't wait to see it. Kevin really got me into this sport one of one of the people at least that got me into the sport so i can't wait to check it out and i know it's going to be an entertainment good entertainment with big fish now let's get to the tournaments so before we get to trey we did have a championship already done we, like i said we got red crest coming up then we got the bassmaster classic coming up in two weeks which by the way just so you guys know we are going to have a show from the classic. Um, we're gonna have some awesome guests and we are going to show you guys some really cool new products that are about to hit the shelves. Uh, the fun thing about the classic is not only do you get to see your fishing heroes, you get to watch an awesome event unfold and see who wins that check and hosts that trophy over their head, but also 
it's like a mini iCast. You have some new products that are coming out. So I'm looking forward to getting there. But we just had the NPFL Championship, the National Professional Fishing League, and they were down on Lake Amistad in Texas. And it was a great three-day event. You know, a couple of the pros you guys are used to, maybe from some of the other tours, there were there are a couple anglers fishing that. Um, guys like John Cox was in the top 10. The winner was Brandon Perkins. Brandon Perkins took the title and he won by over 15 pounds to second place. So he ran away with that thing and he did it with one of my favorite techniques ever. Um, he was throwing a big swim bait, like a mag draft style bait down shallow bluff walls, slowly riding that thing. I was watching him and cranking on him. Um, and he followed it up if he missed a fish with a jerk bait or a Sanko, but um, it was a dominant performance and it was really fun to watch. Now, speaking of dominant performances, and I'm not gonna talk too much about it because we do have him on the horn here, but Trey McKinney won the second stop of the Elite Series. And I don't know about you guys, but I had him in my fantasy fishing team. So some nice points there for the season. It's unreal. He just turned 19 last week, and last week he missed the cut by ounces. He could have fished on his 19th birthday on championship day, but he missed it by ounces. Still, a top 12 finish, nice little check and respectable for an 18 year old. Now 19, obviously he's learned all about the world, he's mastered all fishing, and now he wins the Elite Series event. Um, and punches his ticket already to the Bassmaster Classic. So I'm happy to have him on here, not only a cousin of my buddy Trevor McKinney, but Illinois, Carbondale, Illinois' own Trey McKinney. All righty, everyone. Well, hey, I had to hop off the ice for a second, you know, because there's not many opportunities you get to talk to the individual that you wanted to talk to before the tournament, but uh, he was on too many fish in practice. So here we have with him the youngest to ever join the Century Club, the youngest to ever win an elite <laughs> series event. I mean, I'm sure there's a few more youngest ever there, but forget about that, man. Forget about your age. I mean, you're just crushing it. What's up? Oh, thank you, buddy. Thank you, sir. So, how about that? A week in full, a week on uh, a week in Texas, and a hundred thousand dollars richer, huh? <laughs> I tell you, what, we'll take it any day, right? It's uh, it's unbelievable, man. Just to see, to see it all unfold like that, and being able to catch them how I wanted to the last day is, it, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was really cool. You know, I, I watched the whole tournament, and uh, it was really cool to see you go do a little different stuff on the last day, especially going shallow, you know, catching that big one. Um, I personally, my favorite, I think was you breaking that rod in half and flipping the rod and <laughs> flipping the fish in. Yeah. I, yeah. I tell you what, I, I kind of like when it broke like that, I was like, well, I don't know how good he's hooked, but I know I have to go for it. So that just went in my mind. I was just like, I need to get this fish in the boat. He's mine. I got a big rod, a short rod and a uh, very heavy line. So I was going to get him in the boat. The first time I watched it, I watched like the hiccup, you know, like when it broke, but I didn't understand what happened. And then, you know, I go, oh my God, he's not going to flip that big fish. And then you flip it. And I thought that was insane. <laughs> but then when I realized your rod broke and you flipped the fish, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> where, where does this, where does this go on your list? You know, cause I know, I know you won a few boats when you were young, you know, you won some state events, you know, you've qualified for the leads. That had to be a huge feeling, but to hoist a blue trophy, right? I'll tell you what, like, I mean, ever since I was little, you know, you, you have to be old enough to understand what it's, I guess, what it means um, to, to, to hoist one of those. So, I mean, I would say, you know, to really understand what it meant would be about 14 or 15. Um, I was like, man, I was like, I see these guys. I, that's, I mean, that is like a dream, you know, every time, every little me when I was, Every time before I go to bed or anything else like that, if I had a dream, it would be about that, you know, and uh, just to see it unfold like that, have my mom and the dad there, have a lot of people support me back home. It was unbelievable. You know, it, it's a dream that come true. Uh, and, uh, you know, even even if it don't happen again, which we're going to stay positive with it, uh, that is that's a moment in life that I'll never forget. Well, I think it could happen again, because not not that we don't want to just have, you know, one of 
<laughs> one of our favorite uh, Illinois fishermen on the show. But there was a reason why I wanted to have you on before this season started, because I knew there was a legit opportunity yeah. that something like this happened. I didn't think the second event of the year already, but, you know. Absolutely. It was, uh, like I said, I, and w- when I went through the, the week or whatever, and I lost one fish out of uh, four days of fishing and catching 30 pounds a day, I was like, you know, maybe this this could happen. You know, you know, you always get those weird tingly feeling. But uh, and, and just to say, the fish that I did lost cost me the the overtime all time record. You know, that's uh, that's unbelievable. Just to say, I have the fish to beat the all time record. I mean, that is that is unbelievable. I, I didn't ever think if I thought if I won one, it would never be a slugfest. You know, like I figured it would be a uh, a tough one. Everybody struggling. I had to work really, 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 really hard to get the five bites that made me excel. But to be able to do that on a slugfest was, I mean, it, it was, it turned my, uh, I guess my motto around of how maybe, maybe I can do this, the slugfest tournaments every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'd pay a thousand dollars just to go do what you did this week. Forget the money, forget the trophies, you know, just to catch yeah. like that for a week is just a bucket list. And then, to do it on the biggest stage and to do it to win a big check, I mean, um, yeah, man, <laughs> it's got to be pretty cool. It's got to be pretty cool. Well, now you know we've we've already had Trev on this a few times. Now we got him to we got we needed him to qualify. So then I could really start bugging you too and following you around next year. You know, the McKinney takeover could they handle it? Could Bassmaster handle it? I don't know. No, I would love for my cousin to make it. I feel like it would be awesome because I trust him. Um, you know, everything about it is it would be good. I think we work really well together. Like, I mean, it would be a dream to have have my cousin, you know, make it, come on, uh, come on of it, and, and us work together, break down these lakes together. I mean, that that's that'd be awesome to do with family. And before we let you go, you know, obviously this Midwest outdoors. You grew up in the Midwest. Um, Although Carbondale, you know, Southern Illinois, I feel like is more of the South than Alabama is. You know, some people think you're from Illinois, you're from <laughs> Chicago. Carbondale and Chicago couldn't be more polar opposites. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, we have a little different folk. Uh, it is, I mean, we, we got, I mean, it's like, we're just country, you know. It, I love it. Um, I mean, it's perfect. We live like, I mean, in a perfect area. You know, we're 15 minutes away from any store you want. And for 15 minutes away, we're out of you know. Uh, it, it's it's really cool. It seems we got a farm. I get to hunt. Um, if I hunt, I'm fishing. You know, all the time. That's just uh, just being in the outdoors is what I love. And if you got one takeaway, if you could tell the viewers one thing, the listeners one thing, growing up in Illinois, fishing pressured water like we do in Illinois, um, what is one thing that has helped you a lot fishing in the junior, the high school level in Illinois to now the pros? Absolutely, you know, and when I come from Illinois, I learned how to go out there, focus on my five bites a day, and most likely get paid, you know, that's a, that's a huge thing. If I come from an area where, you know, it, it's a really good fishery, um, you most of the time have to go out there and catch 20 pounds to get a check, that's a little different, you know, you come across the, the stage with a little different mindset, but coming from Illinois where sometimes 10, 11 pounds will get you a check, yep. I figured out how on those tough tournaments, that's why I said, that's the ones I love, because that's what I come from. You know, I come from focusing just to get my five bites. You know, if I, I know if I got four bites or most time at home, that's what I was doing in this tournament. If I get three bites, I realize now I got to catch two more the rest of the day. You know, that's, I, I don't think about, okay, well, here's this. I got to catch so many more a day. I'm thinking about the next bite. I'm not thinking about everything else, who I'm fishing against. I'm thinking about where this next bite is I'm going to get. And that's a really important thing. A lot of people need to do really to, to me. That's what helps me a lot is just, you know, focus on that next bite. Don't focus who you're fishing against, what you're in, what tournament you're in. Focus on that next bite. Have the confidence in yourself that I know I can make it happen. Where is it going to happen and where do I need to go to make it happen? You know, that's that's a huge thing um, to have the confidence in yourself and never give up. Even if you have 30 minutes left, like we did uh, on Sunday, you know, I, I, I caught that 7-6. And I, I mean, I literally about started crying, you know, because I was like, man, I, I need one more bite. I was freaking out. I was stressing out. I was like, no way I'm going to catch 28 pounds, lose the tournament because I have a two pounder in the box. I was like, I have to get one more bite. And when I leaned into it and it didn't move, I was like, I have to land this. Like, this is her. This is what's going to seal it. And when I got that thing in the boat, you know, everything just broke loose. You know, I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold my composure no longer. 
Um, it was uh, it, it was it was a pretty awesome deal. And just just to say, with your head down, stay on the grind. Don't let nothing get to you. If you lose one, look forward to the next one. You know that's the past. Forget about it. Find out what you've done different. Find out what you can do different to land the next one, and just move on. Great advice, spoken like a veteran pro that's been on tour for a whole two months. You know, <laughs> oh, hey Trey, I want to thank you, man. Hey, between you, we got Carter in the high school level. We got Drew Gill kicking right now. You know, I mean, Illinois boys, we're we're winning it. We're we're taking we're taking <laughs> trophies. <laughs> It is really cool to see Drew do as good as he has. I mean, that is awesome. You know, when I, I texted him the other day down there, I was like, I still know who boys got to stick together. You know, he's out there killing them on Toledo and the next tournament, Rayburn. I yeah. mean, that man is doing incredible things. So hopefully, you know, we just keep on a path. Hopefully we both keep catching them and go from there. I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to start making it a thing. The Illinois boys, we're going to make it a group. <laughs> it's going to be a legit thing. So. Absolutely, buddy. Well, thank you, sir. All right. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. Safe travels, of course, and we look forward to watching you all season long. And an honorary now true fish daddy, Trey McKinney. <laughs> Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. Welcome back, guys. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Trey. I know I did. And he joined us. I know he was busy. He's been on like seven podcasts this week. He's been having the interviews and photo shoots from that tournament and on his way to his next. So thank you for taking the time out of your day, Trey. And by the way, guys, I know we're only two events in, but Trey's tied not only for Rookie of the Year, but also Angler of the Year right now with YouTube and bait maker and bad boy phenomenon, Ben Milliken. 2024 is shaping up to be a very interesting year where we have the average age of probably 22 for the top 10 right now. And uh, some, of those, some of those names that you're always used to hearing every Saturday and Sunday um, starting to slide down the leaderboard. So the young guns are coming in strong. So we're gonna see what shapes up this year. I'm really intrigued to see what happens. So we took a hop and a skip over to the Mississippi River on the Lacrosse and on Alaska area, an area that is known for bass fishing during the summer, that has some good walleye fishing in the spring and fall, but in the real late fall and the ice season, and right after that ice thaws, on Alaska and Lacrosse is one of the best yellow perch fisheries, not only in the Midwest, but truly the world. They get so big. The fertile waters of the Mississippi River have so much nutrients in it, have so much bait, and these fish have stomachs unlike any perch I've ever seen. And you guys know, we caught some giant perch this year in the city. They're just built different, and their colors are even better. So we got to go out with the Great River Outdoors guide, guides, and... Vince put us on some really big fish. Now, we only had a short amount of time because, again, we're running back and forth from these shows, but we got into these shallow flats and we're really looking for these fish that are in their winter areas. You know, normally ice is still there or just coming off, but it was completely open. There was a pretty large group of boats out there fishing and I can only imagine how big it would have been if we were out there on a weekend. But people from the dams to the backwaters are looking for these beautiful, beautiful perch. Um, so we fished with them for plastics. We caught a few on the Fish Daddy Spyro. Um, minnows on a, on a drop shot or under a slip bobber was pretty much 
what I saw is the most used technique out there to catch them. Now, occasionally you run into a large mouth or a northern pike, and that's pretty fun out there as well. But the cool thing about it is you can do it without technology. You can do it without fish finders, or you can utilize them. You know, I've never used forward-facing sonar in any water pretty much shallower than seven or eight feet. And it's obviously more difficult to see the shallower it gets because you have more in the way, like weeds and um, brush piles and rocks and such. But when you'd scan, you could occasionally see them and you might not get a clean look at them, but you would know exactly what area they're in. So we could target them and that helped. Um, but like I said, if you're someone that doesn't have the technology, you don't need them either because you just find the shallower basins, uh, the shallower sloughs on the side of the Mississippi River and you kind of find these perch. Drift around and wait till you start getting bites because they are feeding. Um, and within a few weeks, they will move out to the main river. So I was glad we were able to get up there because like I said, the season could be short and then you gotta go find them. A lot of guys will go fish then the barges. Um, there's fishing barges on the Mississippi River that are connected to shore and you pay to get out for the day and can fish off them. It's a really cool um, experience and a unique way that anglers can get to fish that aren't sitting on shore, um, even if you don't have a boat. But also the boat anglers will also start getting clumped together under those dams because not only do the walleye start eating pretty good here, but the perch as well. So it was an awesome time being up there and I wanna thank everyone at the Great River Outdoors for taking us out. It was a cool time and um, I can't wait to hopefully get with them this winter because they offer airboat, fan boat trips on the Mississippi River, which um, has always been a dream of mine to get out on. So if you guys are looking to catch some giant perch this year, Obviously, Lake of the Woods, Devil's Lake, the Great Lakes, they offer unbelievable opportunity for that. But do not sleep on the Mississippi River Perch. In fact, they are some of my favorite and I was greatly impressed by them. So give Great River Outdoors a ring. You can look them up online, greatriversoutdoorsllc.com or call them at 414-791-5534. righty, right, enough about my travels. Now, we're gonna take a quick commercial break but we're gonna come back with a, with a quick fishing report, but also a breakdown of what's going on somewhere else in the Midwest. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. All right, welcome back everyone. We are joined by the steelhead queen herself, the stream <laughs> queen. How are we doing? You know, just making it through another day. It's beautiful out, the weather's getting nicer, so happy to be here. Well, I'm glad you have good weather. Um, we got about two inches of rain last night and the streets are all flooded. The, the ponds are all blown out, the creeks are blown out, but that's a beautiful thing because after a couple of days, once it stabilizes, we haven't had good water in a while. And I know you guys have been dealing with that. Um, what are your creeks looking out like over yeah, there? Absolutely. I mean, we, we were blessed with some rain here probably about two weeks ago and it was one of the nicest, you know, rains that we've seen in a while this year. Um, we've, we've really struggled to keep water in the creeks, which is unlike any other year that I've personally seen. I've, I've been fishing these creeks for about five years now. And every year springtime is 
one of the best times to fish. I mean, the water's beautiful. The weather's getting beautiful. You have those spring run fish coming in. You have the fall run fish starting to drop back. It's a great combination of everything. You get a mixed bag sometimes with the smallmouth coming in. But this year, our creeks got up to about four feet. Um, two weeks ago when we got that good water, we're right back down to a little over a foot and a half, which is not a lot of water for those creeks. So it's just been a really odd year. Yeah. You know, I was just in Minnesota earlier this week. And now I haven't done a whole lot of the driftless fishing in Minnesota or Wisconsin, but I just stopping by a couple of the creeks and a couple of the um, streams that are coming off the Mississippi River. It's mud. Yeah. Like literally you can walk across the whole thing or half of it. And it's just crazy because I don't know about you where you're at, but we're normally ice fishing, you know, and I've always wanted to come out halfway to your area and ice fish on Erie for the giant walleye Yeah, and for three years now there really hasn't been a season. There's no ice. I mean, I believe we got ice for maybe three days this year, but like you said, the past three years, just the, the temperatures haven't stayed cold long enough to get that safe ice for anglers to get out there and actually be able to have their hand at some nice ice fishing, which is a shame because Erie is notorious for having some great ice fishing. So just, you know, a few bad years and don't, you don't get the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So for someone who hasn't, um, done any trout fishing out by you what is it what's it like what um you know what are you normally fishing um do you have a lot of falls there do you fish a lot of eddies and breaks are you fishing pools um give, give us a little outlook of what the creeks look like out there yeah, absolutely. So out here in Erie, Pennsylvania, we are similar to streams that you would find in Ohio and New York, but I tend to believe that we're on the smaller side of these streams. So these are probably a little bit shorter in distance across the stream. You will find a variety of different kinds of bottoms to your creek. So I like to fish a lot of the clay bottom creeks as opposed to the shale and the rock. Um, however, those those creeks tend to get a little muddier quicker simply because of the base of them. Um, but it, mainly throughout, all of these streams are pretty small, which I personally like. Big water can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, especially if you're new to fishing or new to steelhead fishing and struggle to read the water. So these smaller streams that have these runs with easy to read water make the fishing pretty easy. I mean, it's kind of hard to complicate it, especially when you see these massive steelhead in these streams that are maybe six feet across. So um, our fishing here is, I mean, I think it's one of the best in the country. Elk Creek is, I believe, named in the top 10 steelhead streams in the entire country. So it's really nice to have one of those kind of in your backyard. Um, it's a very deep stream and these fish just load in there every year. Again, if the water's not high though, it's not that deep, but you can still manage to pull a few out. Now, are you part of the area they call Steelhead Alley? I believe I am, at least on the East Coast. You know, you have that East versus West Coast rivalry rivalry with this with the Steelhead. But um, I am in the Steelhead Alley of the East Coast up here in Erie, Pennsylvania. So it's kind of nice that that's, you know, only an hour trip up the road from me, you know, to be able to try my hand. Yeah, not, not a bad spot. I, I think we have pretty good Steelhead fishing here in the Midwest. I don't know if you've done most of it and, and gr granted some say you're in the midwest you know it's like right on the border there yeah um but on the great lakes um especially lake michigan i don't know if our numbers are that big as high as your guys are but we grow them thick they are these things are like torpedoes and when they get yeah. acrobatic it is unbelievable absolutely those i do know i have fished trail creek in indiana once which i believe in comes off of michigan and that strain of scamania steelhead I mean, even the little ones are just at least twice as long as ones that you're going to find in Erie, which is just a gem for your streams. Yeah, little uh, little unknown thing I've never said, I don't think. Trail Creek is where I learned to fish. No way. That is where it's it's about an hour from where I live now. But I was blessed that my parents had a had a cottage, you know, that was right yeah. next to that creek. And um You'd have the Kings and then you'd have some coho and you'd have the Steelies. And it was, uh, yeah, a, a little, little Jimmy really loved the, the stream, the scream of the drag, you know, from those fish. 
Oh yeah. And one thing too, about those streams, like I said, similar to up in Erie, just the, the beauty, the beauty of how small those streams are, but what you're able to pull out of them. I, I truly think that's probably the best way to learn how to get into steelhead fishing is to fish this smaller water. When you get more confident, you can go and explore, you know, the Ohio rivers or the, the New York rivers, or even go out West and fish that big water. But I think there's just something so cool about going to a little backyard Creek, you know, you, can you can walk all the way across there and then just pull a massive fish out there's there's just nothing like it yeah it is really wild I think that is some of my favorite part about it being in the nature being in the wilderness and then the fact that the water where you're at could only be up to your shin and you're you know you're casting into or flipping into a five foot hole and you're going to pull out a three foot silver trout is unbelievable absolutely i mean i will say it's gotten me into trouble a few times where creek might look deceivingly shallow you take one step in and you're neck deep <laughs> that, yeah, yeah that's i mean honestly like we can laugh about it because we've all taken those tumbles you know buddy's <laughs> lost a gopro and a wallet and a phone oh, yeah. but be careful like honestly like for a safety yeah. point to everyone if you guys are going to try waiting uh whether it's for walleye this spring or bass this summer or the steelies like um, especially if you've waders on, if you get past those waders and those waders fill up with water, um, it's a scary situation. Oh, it definitely is. Especially if you're like me and you're, you're not vertically blessed, you know, and you're a little, little bit on the shorter side, don't be stepping into any streams with any kind of high flow going through. Cause once that hits your rib cage, your feet are coming right out from under you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So before we let you go right now, someone's out in your area, if you're going out today, what's, uh, what are your conditions looking like? What techniques are you trying? What's yeah. your best chance to catch a steelhead today? Absolutely. So again, right now with the lower water levels in the creeks, I have been targeting the faster moving waters that flow into deeper holes. Whenever you find that moving water with low water in the creek, you're probably going to find a good pot of fish right at the, ba the back end of it because these fish are waiting for that food to come right down into their mouths. Um, and I am personally a big fan of using eggs as the kind of bait that I use, um, being predominant a spin fisherman. This is just my go-to. And at this point in the year, I tend to love to use single eggs because the fish are predominantly spawned out. So you're not going to be finding those clumps of eggs. Those fish are going to understand that if you see a clump of eggs, it's probably not the most natural, but putting on that single hook, probably a size 20 or as small as you can get, small as you feel comfortable with putting a single egg on that hook, that's where you're going to be the most productive at this time of year. One chicken egg and you'll catch one. Exactly. Do you have a preference on which egg though? Seriously? I really don't. You know, it, it depends on the day. Um, just kind of been, I like to, you know, try whatever I'm most comfortable with and then adjust from there. So whatever I'm feeling that day, like to give yourself a little bit of a challenge, try ones you've never tried before, but no preference. Very good. Very good. All right, everyone. Well, if someone wants to catch the stream queen in action, where do they check you out at? You can follow me on Instagram or you can check out my YouTube channel, um, TikTok, whatever else you got. I'm probably on it. Very good. All right. Well, everyone, this is Caitlin, the stream queen. Thanks for joining us. Thank and you for having me. Of course. And we'll, uh, we'll chat in the future about possibly breaking that world record down in New Zealand. Let's do it. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. And real quick, before we say goodbye for the week, I was up at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel show this week, and I got something really cool. Um, I got this beautiful knife by Titan International Knives right here out of Algonquin, Illinois. Um, this knife is so nice. Not only is it really well-balanced and weighted nice to hold, but I mean, look at it. It comes with this nice leather sheath, um, belt attachment on it, multiple clips so you're safe. Um, it doesn't pop off on you. It doesn't cut you while you're driving or walking around. I mean, look at that thing. You got Damascus steel. You got elk bone with the elk print engraved in it. Um, like I said, really well weighted. Uh, the grip's great. Holds your hand, protects you from slipping and sliding on both sides with the guards. And you have the sawing to do whatever kind of little work you need out in the forest. You also have a sharp knife. Did really well with cutting my braid this week and cutting some summer sausage when we got hungry. So just wanted to give Titan International a shout out. Unbelievable, beautiful blade, and I look forward to using it all season long. All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining the Midwest Outdoors podcast this week. I'm Jim O'Neill, and hey, catch us again in two weeks. We'll be at the Bassmaster Classic, and it's going to be a hoot. Until then, guys, tight lines. See you next time.